This edition of Mac Voices is sponsored by Linode, high-performance cloud hosting for everyone. Visit linode.com slash macvoices and take $20 off your first server package. Welcome to Mac Voices. This is the talk of the Apple community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, we're back on the road to Mac stock. We're talking to the presenters. We're talking to attendees. We're talking to just about anybody that's going to make Mac stock 2019 in Woodstock, Illinois this year, a little something extra special. This time, uh, we get to visit with Mr. Brett Terpstra. Brett, welcome. It's great to have you back as always. Always great to be here, Chuck. Um, Brett, I, I, we may have to edit this. I think there's some dirt on your lens or something. That half of your half of your face is like covered in something. Oh, yeah. I just made it worse. Yeah. <laughs> or is it my beard? Are you just seeing my beard? Yeah, that's that's the that was the piece of dirt I was referring to. Yes. Um, <laughs> is that any better? Because in my preview here, it doesn't. Everything looks like it's supposed to. Where where did this come from? This is something new for you. <laughs> Well, I don't know what's happening. Are you talking about my beard? Yes, of course I'm talking oh. about your beard. I thought <laughs> I'm not going to edit any of this. Oh. Well, I just got over on Brett Terpstrip, folks. I'm, I'm really proud. <laughs> you got me. You got me. I've been growing this out since December. And Max Doc, if I haven't gotten completely sick of it, it will be a beard to behold. Well, it, it's impressive now, I must say. Because I, I guess I have some stiff competition from like Josh Center and Dan Peterson, but yeah, good point. Good point. So, so is this an official contest or just unofficial? Very unofficial. Okay. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. You have to be cleaning my lens. I, I, <laughs> I love it. I love it. So, but we have to get a little bit serious here because we are here to talk about what you'll be uh, addressing, the topics you'll be addressing at Max Talk this year. As we both know, Mike took us in a little different direction uh, by designating this year's topic, or this, I guess, the theme, more accurately, as Create. And so, how did you interpret Create, and what are you going to be talking about? Well... Pretty much what I do with my Mac is create all the time. Like I use it for blogging and podcasting and music cre creation, uh, graphic design. Like, so that, it's a pretty broad topic. So I decided to focus on the writing part because I would say that out of all the things I share with the world, writing tools are the most common for me. And so last year I did tagging. and. Tagging is a really hard topic, and I thought I'd take it easy on myself this year and talk about something I can literally do in my sleep. So I'm talking about uh, workflows for writing, and uh, uh, it's a topic that really excites me. So are we talking about writing as in blog posts, novels, or are we talking about writing as in coding? Uh, writing is in prose. And I'm going to cover everything from uh, blog posts to novels, uh, focusing on the short to, to medium length pieces, because uh, those are the ones that I think are most common for, uh, for the, the daily writers. Um, I won't be getting into academic papers or anything, although I, I have written tools for that as well. But um, I'm ADHD, and it's pretty crippling when it comes to writing. So I'm forced to write tools to help me with organization and focus and to remove distraction and help me get things done. So the things that I write, well, I'm also a nerd though, and I hate giving up power and flexibility. So the things I write are really good for anyone. I'm forced to write them. I need them. But these workflows that I develop uh, are, are good for anyone who, who, who hears organization, focus, and lack of distraction as good things. My, uh, the things I'm forced to do are, are good fodder for everyone else. This strikes me as really interesting because you're, you're taking it both as, as a writer – 
who needs these tools, wants these tools, but also as the guy that is building the tools to address those needs. So that, I think, gives it a completely different slant than maybe something I might put down as, okay, I, I have a, a presentation or a um, or you know a, a business proposal or something to write, and so I've got to just go and hole up somewhere in a coffee shop or in the corner of my of my living room and do it. Um, you're sort of addressing something a bit deeper and a bit more, uh, I don't know, intense. Is that a fair way to say it? Uh, I mean, yes, I am, but I'm also, I've done the work because for me, if I'm doing something and I see a way it can be improved, I'm going to take the time to improve it. Even if it's something I probably will only ever do once it's a, a mental illness. Uh, I have to automate and remove friction uh, before I will do something. Um, so I share the things that I figure out though. So people who may also only have to do something once can have a head start that one time. Um, my, what would you call it? Uh, obsessive compulsive nature just helps me write workflows that other people can pick up, even if their intentions aren't as intense as mine. Mm. Um, yeah, I, okay. I can, I can see that. I can see that. So are we talking, I'm sorry, go ahead. The talk will be geared towards people who write regularly, uh, people who blog, people who, who write for publications, um, probably people who publish their work. The talk's not finalized yet, but I doubt I'm going to get into keeping daily journals. That's a different talk. Right. Well, I doubt any of our presentations are, are finalized at this point because I don't care how, how often you give a presentation. Every time you finish it, you tweak something. You know, it's like oh, I yeah. could do that a little better or, hey, there's a, there's, there's a good idea to throw in. So that's just the sort of the nature of it. I did the tagging talk for uh, three different Mac user groups after Mac stock. And by the time we got to the third one, it was a completely different talk. <laughs> I learned a lot on the way. Yeah, and and that's something that I I think that people don't who don't do presentations on a regular basis fail to realize. Uh, sometimes you learn it because of the things you're saying and the changes you're making. Sometimes it comes from the audience that they share yeah. tips and tricks. It's like, wow, I I should have thought of that. Or they don't share anything, and you realize that you didn't capture their attention, so you go back and rewrite it anyway. <laughs> well, let's hope that doesn't happen too often. But yeah, once in a while, once in a while. Linode.com slash Mac Voices is where you want to go if you need a virtual hosted cloud server. Why is Linode so great? Because that's what Linode specializes in. They feature native SSD storage, a 40 gigabit network, and industry-leading processors so that your server is FAST fast. Because you pay for only what you use, with hourly billing across all plans and add-on services, no extra charges for data transfer, no hidden fees or nasty surprises at the end of the month. Because Linode has a new cloud manager with an improved user interface, so deploying your server or servers is easier than ever. Because Linode has data centers around the world, including one just launched in Toronto and one opening soon in Mumbai. So if location matters, Linode has it covered. Because they have a large documentation library to help you get started and help you make the most of your server. Because Linode has 24-7 live customer support, so if you get stuck or have issues, help is just a phone call away. Because Linode has a ton of add-ons, so that you can customize your server with exactly what you want and what you need. Backups, blocks, node balancers, load balancers, and much more. So what do you need to take advantage of all this? Visit linode.com slash macvoices to get set up and to get $20 credit towards your first server. Again. Linode.com slash Mac Voices gets you $20 off your first server. Check it out now and be up and running in minutes. Thanks to Linode for their support of Mac Voices. You were talking about you build the tools. Are we talking about um, are we talking about a review of the tools or is this yeah, just I keep a saying that? It's it's both. Um, I'm gonna talk about it'll go from things like mind mapping uh, of a writing piece and using a mind map to organize sections and topics and break down what you want to say and turning that into 
a written piece. It'll talk about, um, so it'll talk about Markdown. And in the process, we'll be talking about some of the myriad tools I've written for working in Markdown. Um, Searchlink, have you ever used Searchlink? No, I have not. It's a, it's a system that lets me link words and search terms in my Markdown editor without ever opening my browser. Because for a person with ADHD to switch over to their browser, there's a good 64% chance that you will get distracted and be on a different web page and never get back to your editor. Um, so this tool lets me highlight words, hit a key, and it'll link it to the first Google search term or the search result in Markdown, ready for me to keep writing. And it gets more powerful from there. But um, basically, ways to make the writing process frictionless. I, I want to understand that just a little bit more. So if, if, if you are writing and you think eggplant, and you, you can select the word eggplant and have it do a Google search on eggplant? Yeah, and, and link the, the top result as a, like a, a link in your post. Or you could type uh, exclamation point wiki eggplant, highlight that, and it would turn it into a link to a Wikipedia article about eggplant. Mm, okay. Okay, so this in this particular case, we're talking about almost building um, a reference, I guess, a, a ref, a, a, not a reference-based, but a referenced rich document. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's a particular use when you're blogging because you always want to set where you got your information from. You want to link to things of interest. You want to link to other posts you might have written on a topic. So while you're blogging, there's a ton of linking that gets done. And uh, if you can make that a process that doesn't involve constantly flipping back and forth to a browser, all the better. Well, I think that's true of us, whether whether we have diagnosed ADHD or not. You know, it's, yeah, that's what I'm saying. This works yeah. for everyone. It's just required for me. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so how about on the methodology side? I mean, that's just a particular tool, I guess. Um, but do you, I mean, do you advocate writing in the morning, writing at night, uh, writing in short bursts, or? you know, long drawn out sessions. I do not plan to get into that because every time I read that advice, it doesn't apply to me. So I feel that the little hacks like that are very particular to people. And I, I don't believe anyone should tell you it's best if you write this before you eat breakfast. Like I don't, I don't buy it. I don't buy that that works for everybody. I believe that that works for the person who said it, hopefully. But I, yeah, I'm going to talk about how to make whatever your writing workflow looks like now faster and easier and more able to focus on the writing itself. And I need to apologize. I wanted to wanted to ask this question earlier, and then you said something that took me for a moment. But um, give us a quick 30-second explanation of what Markdown is so that folks who are, may not be familiar with Markdown, what that is and why they might want to use it. Sure. Um, Markdown was originally written by uh, John Gruber from Daring Fireball, and it is a plain text markup language. Uh, so you've probably seen HTML source code, and you know that it's not really readable uh, to a human. Uh, and Markdown was created as a way to generate HTML source code without having to write HTML. So it can take things like if you put an asterisk on either side of a phrase or a sentence or a word, convert that into italics. It'll convert it into an M tag in HTML. And all of the different types of HTML tags that you would use, you can create with very simple characters as you write. Okay. So it's deal for blogging. Right. Because it's you're you're creating a hypertext document of some kind and you're just going a, rather than there are to there are tools. There are tools that can output uh Word documents from it or PDFs. Um I might mention Mark 2, since I probably won't in my talk, but Mark 2, my app, 
uh, can convert Markdown into a whole variety of output formats. So it goes beyond just just the web, but that's what Markdown was originally designed for. So if I write, write something in Mark II, I can choose to have it exported to a, a PDF document or a Word document with italics, capitalization, all those things intact. Yeah. Or I can publish it to a, a blog post and then the hyperlinks are, atta- are working. To be fair, you can't write in Mark II. You have to write it in a text editor and then Mark II will, will do all that you're saying, yes. Ah, okay. It's not an editor. Okay. I do have an editor coming up, though. <laughs> Tell us about it. <laughs> oh, I teamed up with Fletcher Penny to finally write the uh, the sequel to NV Alt, which was my sequel to Notational Velocity, which I didn't write. But uh, NV Alt has been wildly popular as a markdown note taking application, and I never made any money on it. So I wanted to make a commercial version, and then that fizzled. And I've been working on it for like five years, but then Fletcher came along. Fletcher Penny is the guy who invented multi-markdown, which is a kind of a, an advanced superset of markdown. And so between the two of us, I think we've got a really great markdown editor coming. Okay. So a minute ago, you said you need to write in a text editor and then run it through NV Alt. You, so in, I, go so. ahead. No. So, well, where I was going with this is, okay, so that's a text editor. So what will, and what will this new editor of yours do that a text editor can't since other than maybe having some of the features of your other application built in because you're supposed to be reading in text. So the markdown syntax can be typed out. But with a, a markdown editing app, which there are a bunch now, IA Writer, Byword, Multi-Markdown Composer, um, with an app like that, if you select some text and hit Command-I like you would in a word processor, it'll put in those asterisks for you. Uh, if you drag an image onto it, it'll create the markdown syntax to link to that image into the post. Um, it gives you a, the ability to, once you've created a series of headlines, you get a table of contents. That's in Multi-Markdown Composer. But you can jump between the sections of your document from a table of contents just by adding the headers. Little touches like that that make, it's still a text editor, but it makes Markdown editing easier. Okay. So, I mean, I, and we've gone kind of into the deep end here, and that's, this is not going to be part of the talk. It does but- always happen with us. Well, it it does, but I think it's it's interesting, Brett, to to listen to how your mind works and how you do it because you do put out quite a quite a bit of content, and the, the fact that you have that obsession with wanting to streamline things, um, I, I think all of us have it in one way or another. I always, my personal definition of it is cost benefit. You know, how much time is this going to cost me, and what's the benefit going to be? So, if I'm going to do something just once, I may not be quite as obsessive as you might be about right. doing it the most that's, efficient. That's way. because you're sane. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know about that, but um, but but well, still, the only, you know, the only way I could make a career for myself was to share all of those crazy projects that I did. Um, if it were just me and you were only seeing the output that was created by those projects, I wouldn't be getting anywhere. Um, for me to invest the time in automating something, it, was, it would never pass a cost-benefit analysis. Um, but if I share that and people come to uh, expect or it builds confidence for people to hire me for a consultation, for people to follow me, and I have enough readers to you know make money on my blog, and all of that is because I figured out a way to monetize this OCD behavior of mine. And there's you know there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, I, I don't I don't feel that you're making an apology for it. You're just making an explanation. And oh no, I'm super proud of it. You, well, you should be. You should be. I mean, because the, and, and there are obviously a lot of people that either either share your predilections or are learning from them because of your success. I hope so. I don't That's how I sleep any, at night. Yeah. <laughs> well, so this this is going to be a, a very interesting talk. Um, 
and I, I'm, I like the idea of you helping us create uh, our own text projects, if you will, or our own prose projects. That was your word, your yeah. own prose projects a little more efficiently um, through, through your lens. Um, can I, can I switch your topic for a second? Of, of course, of course. You might not know this, but my lovely partner, L, is going to be teaching yoga for nerds. I don't think that's what she's going to call it, but it'll be yoga specifically for people who like sit at computers for most of their day and need wrist stretches and back relief and things like that at Max Stock. Oh, I didn't know. Mike hasn't told me about that. Yeah, I know. It's kind of a secret right now. Okay. Exclusive. Sorry. Sorry, Mike. It's it's out now. Um, <laughs> no, that's great. That's great. It'll be the kind of thing you can show up for in jeans and a t-shirt, whatever you're whatever you're uh, wearing to Max Stock. You won't get all sweaty, but you'll learn some uh, great stretches. That I I have carpal tunnel. I have low back pain. Um, this kind of work has eliminated all my pain, so I'm really excited that people are going to get a chance to learn a bit of it. Okay, I've got to get Elle on the show now to talk about it. But but thank you. you I did not. I did, yeah, I will. I did not know that, and and that that's that's great. And as someone who has only a a very 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 passing from, uh, knowledge of yoga or or what it is, I've I've looked forward to uh, learning from her too. That's really interesting. Hmm. Okay, so th sorry, there's a bonus. Sorry, I just really wanted to get that in there. No, I, I've, and I would have asked. I had no idea. So that, that's terrific. So see, folks, there are all kind of reasons to come to Max Talk. At the very least, you get to see what Brett's beard will look like at that point. <laughs> <laughs> um, Brett, I know as we record this, that the, uh, the, the early bird prices are either gone or, or and almost certainly are gone by now. Um, but I think you have a speaker code to save $10 off admission. I do. It's Terpstra. It, that that's easy to remember. Okay. I know. So, folks, MaxDoc 2019. If you use Brett's code, which is Terpstra, or you can use my code, which is Mac Voices. Obviously, um, you can't stack them. Unfor that's the unfortunate part. But um, um, use one you have to the other. <laughs> yeah. Well, you have to choose. You know, the bearded guy or the clean shaven guy. Um, but but by all means, use the code. Um, sign up and join us in Woodstock in July. We're going to have a blast. We always do. Uh, it's 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 so much fun. There's also a lot of learning going on, a lot of community. Uh, it's just, it's one of my favorite weekends of the year. And Brett, you're coming the whole way down from Minnesota uh, yeah. to, to, go, to go there. I'm coming from Pennsylvania. And we talk about it a lot, but it really is true. We have people coming internationally down from Canada, yeah. and we've had people come over from Europe. Um, yep. Just for this weekend, so it's picking up steam. People are really starting to take Max Stock seriously, and it's only up from here. It's going to be great. Well, you think about it. The first, the first year, it's okay. It's a first year conference. Somebody's trying something. The second year, all right. They thought enough of it to do a second year. This is the fifth year, and and that mm -hmm. to me says, okay, you have an established conference that you can come to, and. It's continually evolved. Mike, Mike and Barry both, in, with their respective events, are trying to keep it fresh. And that is also an important consideration because it's real easy for somebody to just do the same old tired thing every year. And after about the, the third year, you say, well, I'm not doing that again. So, I, I yeah, think I didn't. I, I think. I think I went to the second one. I didn't go to the first one because it was too small for me. Just kidding. I didn't. I didn't hear about it until I think the second year. I think this will be my fourth time. I kind of think so too, because I don't yeah. think. Well, the first year it it was. It was a bit smaller, and we ended up then in Barry's backyard for Saturday night, right. and it it quickly outgrew that. And um, yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Well, great. Then I will look forward to seeing you in July at Max Talk. Um, and definitely L as well. And folks, you can look forward to uh, an interview with L um, as soon as I can get her on camera. Uh, and hey, we hope to see you there as well. MaxTalk2019.com. Brett, thanks so much for the time. Great to see you.
Always a pleasure. We'll do it again. Folks, I'm Chuck Joyner. That's the Road to Max Talk this time. We have a lot more coming with a lot more speakers. I hope you will join us then and in Woodstock. Until the next time, thanks for watching. Visit macvoices.com for show notes and to connect with Chuck on social media. Get involved in our Facebook group or like our Facebook page and get more out of your Apple tech with Mac Voices Magazine, free on Flipboard and on the web. And if you find value in it all, Consider supporting us through either our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash macvoices or by making a one-time donation via the PayPal link on our front page and in the show notes of each episode. You will join these fine people who help bring you Mac Voices. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com